You've suddenly got the population under control all over the world. Dick Lindzen also dismisses the claims of climate alarmists. He's one of the world's leading meteorologists, was professor of meteorology at both Harvard University and MIT, and has served on the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC. Even the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, if you go to their section of working one, group one, which is the science, they don't support any of these claims. And I assure you, having served on it, it's biased, but you couldn't get any real scientist to agree some of the nonsense that's being promoted. Will Happer is also a denier and is another of America's leading physicists. He has been science advisor to three presidents and professor of physics at both Columbia and Princeton University. There's this mischievous uh, idea that's promoted that scientific truth is determined by consensus. In real science, you know, there are always arguments. No science is ever settled. You know, it just uh, is absurd when people say the science of climate is settled. It's not, there's no such thing as settled science, especially climate. The central England record of temperature is a world treasure, you know. It's the longest continuous record that we have, and it's certainly not a very alarming record. It began in the depths of the Little Ice Age, and so you can see the slight warming that followed the Little Ice Age. And there's certainly nothing very alarming that's happening today uh, at the very end of the record. Most of the warming that we're observing today is the recovery from the Little Ice Age, whatever caused that. Well, you know, we're talking over the entire industrial period of about one degree centigrade. You know, when I hear people pontificating about one and a half degrees leading to the end of civilization, I think, what have they been smoking? You know, are you crazy? <laughs> All right, so. According to thermometer readings since 1880, there's been a very mild increase in temperature. Only by stretching the y-axis on this graph is the increase noticeable. This is the rising line used by official agencies as proof of global warming. During the last uh, glacial maximum, there's good evidence that in many parts of the world there was plant starvation from not enough CO2. So uh, we should be very grateful that CO2 levels are beginning to go back up. We're still far from the historical norms, which would be several thousand parts per million. There's not enough fossil fuel to get there, but at least we're making a start. <laughs> but has the small recent increase in CO2 affected the temperature? We would now show you a picture of CO2, but we can't because it's invisible. CO2 makes up a tiny fraction of the gases in the atmosphere, just 0.04 of a percent. It is just one of 25 different greenhouse gases, which, taken as a whole, form only one part of Earth's complex climate system. So what evidence is there that this trace gas is having any noticeable impact on the climate? If it were true that higher levels of CO2 caused higher temperatures, we should be able to see that in Earth's climate history. Here, scientists are drilling into ancient ice cores, these cores tell us both about past temperatures and CO2 levels. Scientists have indeed found a link between temperature and CO2. The trouble is, it's the wrong way round. So it's true over the last few million years of the ice age that we're in now that CO2 and temperature are correlated, but if CO2 is the driver, it has to change first, and the temperature has to change second. You can already see that the main uh, supports of the climate alarm movement, which are these enormous computer models, they're clearly wrong. They, they don't agree with what we observe. And they, uh, they're all running much too hot. They don't get the geographical distribution of temperatures anywhere close. They don't get El Nino, La Nina cycles. Uh, they're just nonsense. All climate models are based on the assumption that CO2 drives temperature change. But actual observations and historical evidence clearly suggest that it doesn't. Here is a chart of global hurricane activity over the past 40 years. Hurricanes have been around forever, you know, we've got good 
proxy records of hurricanes, and uh, there's been no change in their frequency. Even the IPCC admits that. How about melting ice caps and drought? Here's a satellite record of temperature in Antarctica since the late 1970s. It shows no increase whatsoever. And here is a record of global drought since 1950. There is no observable increase at all. Polar bears are meant to be going extinct, but studies suggest their numbers are growing. The Great Barrier Reef, too, has recently reached record levels. The climate alarm is nonsense, you know, it's, it's a hoax. As, as I, I, I don't, I've never liked hoax. I, I think scam is a better word, but I'm willing to live with hoax. But why are we told again and again that man-made climate chaos is an undisputed scientific fact? Beyond question, beyond doubt. Thank you very much. Until the 1980s, global warming was little more than an eccentric scare story put about by radical environmentalists. But then the cause was picked up by an ambitious young senator, Al Gore, who would soon become vice president. A billion dollars a year of public money was made available for research into climate change. This quickly rose to two billion. Up to that level. Academic researchers in various disciplines began to apply for this climate funding. You're dealing with the sexual habits of cockroaches, you'll add, and the impact of climate. Academics of every kind lined up for climate funding. Climate became an exciting new area of interest for sociologists, biologists, professors of English literature, lecturers in gender studies, and many more. And it also served to create a community. I mean, you know, you've become a climate scientist now, even though you know nothing about the physics of climate. Thousands of papers were published on climate change and prostitution, climate change and beer, climate change and the Black Death, climate change and disability, climate change and video games, and everything else imaginable. It's always been a problem to support uh, your research or your existence, or raison d'etre. And so climate was a godsend. Many working people are not merely skeptical, but positively angry about the climate alarm and all that flows from it. There is a suspicion, or perhaps realization, that climate change is an invented scare, driven by self-interest and snobbery, cynically promoted by a parasitic, publicly funded establishment, hungry for ever more money and power. An assault on the freedom and prosperity of the rest of us.